Today we're in Cornwall, Connecticut, in the upper northwestern corner of Connecticut. And we're at a friend of mine's mill here, New England Naval Timbers, owned by my friend Duke Biozzi. Now, we don't spend an awful lot of time in country like this, but uh, it's really impressive. It's beautiful, the rolling hills, the beautiful rivers and lakes. This is a great place. I love going to these mills. I've been going to mills most of my life and been always impressed with every type of mill. I love the rotary mills, the early hand operated ones, you know, the, uh, the band mills today are fantastic. But this is a different type of mill here. This is a chainsaw mill and uh, it has to be because the timbers here are so huge it's an, it defies imagination. They're, they're just fantastic. And uh, it's a source of material that I couldn't do without in my business right here. The heart's down here on this end and on this end the heart is a little bit higher. It's, it, it, well, it's, a, it's about an inch and a half down, so it's, it's just a touch diagonal. That doesn't mean anything to me. This is the stuff I'm interested in right here. Look at this stuff right here with the squiggly uh, medullary rays yeah, in it. Isn't yeah. that pretty? That's you know what that would look like? Uh, 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 gorgeous. Uh, oh, that's gorgeous. Like, well, you, like all that old sticky furniture they used to use that. Absolutely. You know, the strangest stuff thing about it is this, they used to carve these out uh, in um, Roman days and stuff. They, that was the most expensive jewelry you could get. My God. Was the medullary rays. They'd carve off all the wood and keep the medullary rays. But yeah, the thing I like about them is, is if you put your head over here, they're the darkest thing, yeah. right? You put your head over here and they're the lightest thing. So they have like this, oh, they have yeah. this iridescent yeah. kind of thing to That's the medullary cool. rays, which is, yeah, very cool. Well, it was great to go around the yard with Duke and look at lumber and talk about lumber because he's a man after my own heart. He understands things the same way I do about lumber and he understands all these different details that are really, really important to me. Yeah, right in the middle. Yeah. Right. We're going to cut an enormous, probably 14 or 16 inches thick right out of the middle. And what's that going to be for? It's going to be vertical grade to be resawn. Yeah, to be resawn into two buys or one buys. Yes, right. Sure. So right. you're just going to take all the slab sawn stuff right off yeah, of it, and you'll have all this vertical grain yeah. left. Yeah. I'll tell you what, vertical grain, and you know it. The furniture builders and everybody, yes. that's what they want. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Slab sawn stuff is not quality lumber for furniture. No. Nor is it really quality lumber for boats. There are situations in boats where it doesn't matter if the grain's like 45 degrees because you're coming in it from two different directions with fastenings. Yeah. So you can't decide if you want the grain this way or you want the grain this way. So it's like, well, okay, you know, just put it this way and that'll be it. That yeah. answers the question. Yeah. You know, so we do take, you know, in a lot of these logs, if they're beautiful uh, straight grain, I don't mind if they, they've got a little bit of a, you know, 45 degree angle to the yeah. bark, you know. You know, if it was a cut one, that would be a piece cut like right across in here, yep. you know, with the, with the uh, bark on, on it this way. So let me ask you a few more questions while we're standing here. Sure. Um, how many requests have you had on oak knees? Oh, quite a bit. He, he just brought a big one down here to this one. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we get that. Actually, that came from this tree. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, this is a nice one too. Look. This is a nice one right here. Yeah. Look at this. It's, it's almost, almost 90. I know it. There's so many things about this one right here when I look at it. One of the things is easy to get uh, a, a wider uh, 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 piece out of here because the heart is way off to one side. The heart is way over here. So yeah. this is all vertical grain on this side. Yeah. And then let me look at the end of it here. Yeah, and the heart in this side is way over here. Yep. So that right there is nice grain going right around there, 90 degrees, almost 90 degrees. That is uh, quarter knees for a skiff, mm -hmm. uh, brace knees that go from the side to the bottom. Yeah. If you, you know, if we're, we're going to build a bigger skiff that's going to require some of yeah. those brace knees. But that one right there. Well, we're going to set that aside for Louis then. I want that one right there. <laughs> That's good enough. Yeah. That's me right there. Lou. Yeah. <laughs> that one belongs to me. I like that. Yeah. I'm going to be looking for more of those. All right, let me take a look at this piece right here too. 
then I got together with Alan to actually flip some lumber and look through some piles and find what we need. I, I think red oaks you see more yeah. of in curved. There's these logs oh, look right at these here. Logs right here. over here, oh. nice and curved logs. I'm looking for curved logs to do gunnel caps on the skiff, you know, to follow the shape of the boat right around. I'm curving that one right there. These have the center right in them, so they're pretty nice lumber on both sides of the center. Uh, it's also vertical grain. You can see that the, uh, that the uh, bark is, is uh, right straight across the tree right here. So you've got vertical grain on each side. Uh, that would make great gunnel caps. So also with this one. I think I'm going to, unless I see something better in the yard, I'm going to have these cut up and use them for gunnel caps. What we're after today is some really nice long pieces. So we're gonna cut them into rails and chines for the 23 footer that we're gonna build for another 18 footer. And uh, you know, it's not important that they be flawless. They need to be flawless down the sides because that's where I get my material. They're center cut, the pith is in the middle, I'm not gonna use, I'm gonna cut that out. But basically, I'm looking for the lints the nice clear long lintz that's bendable and uh, I can't have flaws yep. in it or big knots or anything like that. It's structural elements of a boat that I'm gonna build. 24 feet. See, it's got that. This side right here is nice though. It hasn't been set out in the sun. That's what does it. I'd very much love to look at that. Looking at lumber isn't just looking at lumber, it's work. You have to flip these pieces and everything else. These pieces are heavy. We need to have them the narrow side up so we can grade them. Yeah, see that? <laughs> That's the problem with that one. I knew it was going to be real narrow. Yeah, I'm going to measure to see what, what it is to here. Okay, 17 feet. That one's not going to do it for me, I don't think. The time spent here in the mill is really important. It's a lot of work. You have to uncover a lot of piles. A lot of them are covered up with this black rubber roofing because it helps the lumber season, or it certainly protects it. And it does season some under that rubber. But uh, lumber that I need and a lot of lumber that's bought for the purposes of boat work is not seasoned at all. Two and a half. Let me look at this a little bit more right here. It's steamed to be bent. All kinds of it is used green. Heavy, heavy timbers aren't seasoned well. You know, eight inch timbers and 10 inch timbers, they use green. So we have to have a source of green lumber. This is the source of the lumber that I use as far as Quercus alba white oak. See that one right there? Because the bark is like almost 90 degrees to the, to the face the way it was sawn. That's a center cut, you know, and the heart should be right in it. And here's the heart right here. It's well off to one side, but that's the heart, so it's in it. On the other side of this log, you'll be able to see checking going right down through because uh, the heart being so close. But the idea that I want is the vertical annual rings like this because it swells and contracts a lot less. And if it's anywhere near seasoned, you know, if I cut that into two bys, that make transoms right there. And here's probably another side to it right here. Yeah, you get a foot out of here. Yeah, you see the box even more 90 degrees on this side. So that's a nice piece, really. You know, it doesn't look like the best piece in the yard, but it's attractive to me. Yeah, and I know we can't flip it. I'd love to, but... No. Well, come on! <laughs> I know, it. that one's tough. I don't even know if I can see it. I was scraping it with my fingernails under there to see if I could feel checks in it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it hasn't been in the light, but that's all blonde on the other side. It's got some... Uh, it feels like forklift diggers in it right there. Well, here's a couple of flitches right here. I think they're off the same tree. 
but uh, this one's already been edged once. This is a giant piece of wood right here. I think it's got 38 inches of wood across that's in good shape, and it's about 14 feet long, but it's got all this beautiful vertical grain right in here. The reason why I want this log is because I can cut two bys out of it repetitively and they make transoms for the skiffs that I build because you need the vertical grain going across. Uh, if it was slab sawn, the, the wood for a transom, it would shrink a lot and probably cup a lot. When they cut two bys out of this vertical grain, it doesn't cup and it doesn't shrink a whole lot. It shrinks about 10% in this direction that it does in this direction. So that's exactly what I want, is nice center cut vertical grain, and we've got it. So we're gonna get, uh, there's 18 inches. You're gonna get eight out of it, or seven. Yep. That's okay. Yeah. On each side. On each side, you'll have, a, you'll have quite a load there. Yeah, but I, I, I come back and get that in a pickup truck. Oh yeah. Once it's sawn up, I don't need to bring a big trailer. No, no. No, yeah. Hmm. But there's others too, I mean, you let's know. Keep, let's keep yeah. looking. Well, now look right here. This is something I've been looking for right here and was actually gonna go out in the woods and look for and have some custom sawn ones. But here's one right here. This is like a 60 degree uh, V in an oak tree. This is a branch coming out and this is the main trunk right here. So what I want these for is breast hooks right in the bow of the boat that goes right around and down the other side. And this one's really good because it's quite large and uh, it's got a lot of nice quartered lumber on this side and a lot of nice quartered lumber on this side. And the other things about it is that uh, a lot of these pieces, when you look at them, they got a terrible imperfection right in the middle of them right here. And mostly that's because it's a, it's a tree crook where the tree grew up and then split off into two. That's not the case right here. This is the main trunk of the tree right here. This is a branch. So this is not your normal tree crook right here. It's a trunk and a branch. And you can see right in here, it's got some really squiggly grain or really figured grain right in here. And when you saw knees out of this, it's gonna be incredible looking right in here because it's gonna have this really figured wood. And that's what's so beautiful about this. But if I were to take a tree crook, like where a tree splits off into 60 degrees to get this, it would have a much worse imperfection in it like this. So this is what I've been looking for, and it's gonna get a couple of slabs out of here at least, uh, the corners or the breast hooks for a couple of skiffs or the 23 footer that we're gonna build, and uh, I expect it to come out really, really nicely. We're gonna come back and possibly view this being sawn in the band mill in maybe, uh, maybe a week or so. so uh, we're looking forward to this because these things are not easy to get. And uh, you know, everybody's really looking for them, but nobody knows where to get them. So this is where to find them. And uh, I think this is fantastic because uh, we we're gonna make a tremendous effort to get some of these out of the woods and then season them up. And what I'm gonna do with this after I slab these out, I'm gonna cut them off the lint I want and get it as small as I can get it and it'll be slabbed into two bys or two and a quarter inch pieces so I can finish them down to two inches. And uh, basically what I'm gonna do with them, you've probably seen me do it before, but I'm gonna put them in a plastic bag or some sort of a tank and I'm gonna boil them or steam them like crazy for a number of hours. And what it does is it boils the lignin or it melts the lignin that's in the wood and it basically cooks it. So it becomes very hot inside and when you take it out of the steam or take it out of a boiling tank or whatever, it's so hot that it dries very quickly, but it doesn't check anymore. You don't have the threat of it checking after you cook it like that. So that's what I have to do to make these things legitimate. A lot of people will get a crook like this and they'll slab it out. Then they think they're gonna let it sit around for two or three years or something before they use it. And then when they go to use it, it's, it's all checked. It's got vertical checks in it, you know, that are, are on the medullary rays, 90 degrees to the surface of this lumber. So when this slabs out, it's gonna have some figured grain in here really, really pretty. You know, it's, uh, it's actually 
an imperfection is what I'm looking for. You know, that grain right in there, because it's visually beautiful. Now, he's just gonna buck it off right here. We got an orange painted line on it right here. I don't need anything longer than something like that. So he'll just buck this right off and use that for firewood and the same thing right in here. They had a line on it right in here and uh, they were just gonna buck that right off and use all that for firewood, but I've kind of stopped them in their tracks. And then we're just gonna buck it off right here as well. Like I say, I'm looking for this. There's another six inch flitch right here and it is center cut. It's got the quarter sawn lumber on both sides. Fantastic piece. Well, now the look of these uh, medullary rays is really something, but like I said, half of it's to do with the chainsaw cut. But this right here, I wanted to show you this right here. This is some sort of a check that's in it. Now it's not open very wide and it's not from drying in the sun or anything like that. And it's connected up with this one. There's a, a medullary ray running right up there and, a, and connecting up with that one right there. So it's some sort of a check and it even has another check in it further down. So this is interesting, but it doesn't uh, make an imperfection in the lumber so much that it devaluates it or anything like that. It's still very useful for what I want to do with it. Well, here's a pile of black locusts right here. You don't see this very often in any lumber yard. It's really hard to find in the woods and you know, some of it's a little small. There's some stuff in here that's like fence post size really, but uh, that won't be used for lumber. It'll be cut up for firewood. But there's some nice pieces in here, like say across this log right in here, there's some beautiful stuff. If you cut planks out of it this way or flitches, you'd have quarter sawn black locust. Now a lot of shipwrights really love black locust. They like it because it's very hard. It's very rot resistant and it makes fantastic like shear planks or rail caps, you know, covering boards, things like that on the edge of the boat would allow them to take a beating. This kind of wood right here takes a beating and keeps on ticking. Believe me, that's some nice lumber right there. It's very hard to get this, very hard to find it in the woods or have an opportunity to log this much black locust from anywhere in the world. So this is real special stuff. And uh, you can, it's, it is big enough to get corded lumber right out of there. And a lot of them are. Some of them have got the heart off center like that or like this one. And uh, basically you can get nice vertical grain lumber out of both sides of this. Be fantastic for furniture work. Now here's one right here that's kind of interesting because it's got these round uh, imperfections in it right here you might call them but those were where branches used to split off this is probably the very top of the tree it wouldn't be the bottom and there's another one right in here kind of looks like it's got two hearts in it but uh, I don't know this is a shoot off right here or a branch that comes out of the center of the tree rather than coming off the side this is very different that you don't see too much of this and the center of the tree is really over here now this butt end is showing its annual rings right here. They're quite large. So what that means actually is this tree uh, was much faster grown than the other ones because you can see the annual rings are very wide. And whatever that means, I'm not exactly sure, but the tree grew fast. So it either had a lot of nutrients or it was exposed to the sun or something like that more so than the other trees. The one next to it is very slow grown. The annual rings are very tight in that log and very big wide in this log. Now the other thing I'd like to say is you see imperfections in here in every one of these logs at the ends. But this is the top of the tree basically. So when you buck this back you won't see that many imperfections and some of the logs will be nice and clear and a lot of them will have big branches sticking out of them different things like that so there's all kinds of different quality in here and different uses some of the shorter pieces can be used for things like furniture or whatever and the longer pieces would be used in boat work so so uh, that's a hell of a pile of black locusts right there and some of these pieces are quite long actually for black locusts some of the stuff is 16 feet long so um really worth some money and uh, very valuable lumber. 32 foot 9. You go about half the length of it here. The whole thing, sapwood and everything? No, take off the sapwood. 17 inches. 17. Yeah. That's a nice looking piece of lumber right there. You've got 19 feet. And if that was in it, 22 feet. Yeah, I'm going to take that piece for sure. All right. 
Uh, yeah, I'll take the whole piece. This one I know is checked on the other side, but let me see here. Let's see if it's a little thicker in the middle here. Yeah, that's two and a half, at least. Now, before I commit to taking that one, I wonder if we can flip it back over. There you go, it's gonna go. Okay. It was this side that was so good. And up to 24 feet, 24. I'll take it. I'll take that one. So two of them. Two of them at least. Just to check it out, there's two and a quarter inches. And uh, they'll scale it at two and a quarter inches because it's uh, consistent all the way down. I'm not going to pay for a two by with that. It'll be two and a quarter inches scaled. Now, it's 20 inches wide up here, but that's with the sapwood and it's got some pith in the middle. So your, your quality lumber is right in here. The heart is right over in here. So just about that far from the heart, you're starting to get these vertical annual rings right here. And then if you cut the sapwood off of it out here, you know, you've got six or seven inches of perfect vertical grain in here. So it's got nice edge grain or corded stuff right in here. And now we have this side kind of covered up with this and we're not gonna move it because it's awful heavy. But it's also got straight grain on that side that's even longer. Yeah, so I would say that that one, and I think it was this one as well, we're gonna buy these two slabs right here. We're gonna have them cut off the length that we want so we don't have to carry them on the trailer quite that long. These are large pieces of wood right here and there are the large trees. These trees came from the Hudson Valley only a number of miles down the road right here. You know some of the very bigger trees that he gets there I believe are from Pennsylvania area and uh, he, he's uh, He's uh, very friendly with some loggers down in there. So he goes down to Pennsylvania and finds these logs either in log yards or he commissions to have them sawn down one or the other. So if he's buying them out of log yards, you could go into Pennsylvania and find timbers like this in log yards sitting around waiting for some soya or some mill to buy them so they can turn them into this kind of stuff right here. This kind of stuff right here is what all the furniture builders uh, made everything out of. You know, Thomasville High Boys, whatever expensive furniture there is, it's never made out of slab sawn pieces like this piece. It's made out of corded pieces or vertical grain pieces like this right here. Well, it's time to load the pieces that we picked onto the trailer. They happened to be behind another pile of lumber, so Alan and I had to lift one end of them up quite high to get them up onto the forks. Once we did that, the rest was easy. The time spent here is really important because you get a good look at every piece. I've picked out pieces, quite a few pieces, and then actually rejected them because I found better pieces. So you wouldn't want to just look at part of the pile and then pick something out and go home with anything. You can't do that. You have to go home with the pieces that you need. You have to inspect it. You gotta know what you're doing, all those different things. <laughs> Your buddy, right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stack them, so put it right down the middle. Oh, we can slide it, no problem. I want to thank Alan, really, for helping us out in the lumber yard here. He and I worked pretty hard flipping lumber and different things like that, and uh, don't kid yourself, these pieces are heavy, real heavy. It's 57 pounds per cubic foot. So if I were to measure this up, I think you'd be astounded as to how heavy this stuff really is. So it's difficult to move it by hand and get it onto a trailer. We need it. I'd like to thank Duke one more time. We spent a little time in his little shack here talking about all kinds of different things, lumber, equipment, projects, all kinds of stuff like that. So it's really fun to sit down and have a conversation with somebody that uh, I get along with so well. Uh, rebuilding Freedom, 105 foot, yeah, the big Trumpy. And I remember coming up and getting a stem for it, which was quite a large piece of lumber right there. Yeah, I think that thing was like 16 inches by eight or something like that and it was quartered 
You know, so it was slap, you know, it was a really a nice piece of lumber. I double rabbited the planks into that because it's got two layers of planks. Oh, nice. So I cut a double rabbit in it. Yeah. yeah. And then we bought all the framing stock for Freedom from you yeah. as well. Yeah. Three buys. Yeah. Yeah. And that probably was maybe in the early 90s, was it? I think so. A long time ago. Right, a long so, time ago. That's yeah. right. Well, I want to thank you so much for uh, having the lumber on the scene and saving it for me. And uh, we're going to be back in a number of days here and pick up some of those knees. So thank you so much. And uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. We've got the pieces that we bucked off the end of these long pieces in the back of the truck. And now we're just strapping these pieces down onto the trailer. They're like 25 feet long. Look at the size of them. Wow, this is great stuff. It's great to know that timber like this is still growing and still in the forest in New England. I'm positive after looking at it that the pieces that I need are in these pieces and I'm gonna shortly make a big effort to get them out of there. So we're gonna be ripping this stuff up into strips for the chines and the rails, probably three inches across and it's two and a quarter inches or two and a half inches thick. So. We'll have to resaw it a little bit afterwards in a bandsaw to get it down to like three by one and a half. Well, we're headed home, but I left lumber that I purchased in that yard intentionally because I just have to come back and have a conversation with Duke and sit down and enjoy myself. And this is the way we do it. I'm letting you in on a little bit of my life here. You know, these are the things I do on a daily basis and uh, I'm still in love with it.